tricky problem and its solution, an old man used to live with his three sons. After old man passed away, his lawyer came up to his three sons and gave them his will. Among all other assets, old man had mentioned about seventeen ducks in his will. In will old man stated that eldest son should get half, one half, of seventeen ducks. Middle son should be given one-third, one-third, of seventeen ducks and youngest son should be given one-ninth, one-ninth, of seventeen ducks. Sons were able to divide up all the assets, but they were not able to divide ducks between them, as it was not possible to divide seventeen ducks, the way it was mentioned in Will. Ever after trying many ways, they were not able to solve this problem, so they decided to go to a wise man, who used to live outside village. All three brothers went to him with ducks kept in carriage and told him about their father's will. Wise man listened to them carefully and patiently. After this wise man bought a duck of his own and kept it with other seventeen ducks, with wise man's duck, total number of ducks were now eighteen. Now wise man asked them to open up their father's will and then start to divide ducks accordingly. He gave half, one half, of eighteen ducks that is nine ducks to eldest son, one third, one third, of eighteen ducks that is six ducks to middle son, at last, one ninth, one ninth, of eighteen ducks that is two ducks were given to youngest son, now this adds up, nine six two is equal to seventeen, with this one duck was left. Which wise man's duck? He took it back, moral, the attitude of negotiation problem solving is to find the eighteenth duck i.e. the common ground. Once a person is able to find the common ground, the issue can be solved. It is difficult at times. To reach a solution, the first step is to believe that there is a solution. If we think that there is no solution, we won't be able to reach any. Monk's advice, once in village a man used to live alone at home. He loved animals and wanted to keep a pet for himself, one day while walking by village crossroad, he saw a little poisonous snake who was searching for food. Man liked it so much that he decided to keep it as his pet. When he took it home, he would let it crawl in his house freely. For others' safety, he made a bamboo cage for it when he started to take care of it. Whenever he had to leave home, he would keep that snake in cage, he named it Coco and was so fond of his pet that all his friends and relatives would call him as Coco's father. Man used to follow a monk. Before long, Monk heard about it. He called Man to him. Monk asked him, Is it true? Are you keeping a snake as your pet? Man replied, Yes, master. I love him like my own child. Monk was wise. He said to him, It's not safe to live with a poisonous snake. I would advise you to let him go for your own safety. Man was too fond of snake, so he replied, Little Coco is like my own son. I know it wouldn't bite me and can't give him up. Before man left, his master again warned him about danger of living with a poisonous snake. Later one time, Monk and his followers went on to mountains for some work. Man went along with them, and while out on mountains man left snake in cage, Monk and his followers returned after a few days. After returning home, man realized that snake had not eaten whole time while he was out on mountains. Man went toward cage and opened it to let him out for food. Because snake was hungry for long, as soon as man hand went toward him, snake bite him, within minutes man died, moral, one should not be foolish to ignore nature. Sometimes we need to understand that nature of living beings cannot be changed and act sensibly. Spending money, during the reign of Akbar, Birbal's wisdom was known to all. Many ministers in Akbar's court were jealous of him and one of them was Akbar's brother-in-law. 
He requests Akbar to remove Birbal from his ministry and appoint him in his place. Birbal got to know about it. Before Akbar could decide, Birbal resigned from his ministry and left. Akbar decided to test his new minister. So he called him and gave him 300 coins saying, Spend these coins in such a way that I get 100 coins in this life, another 100 after life in other world and left 100 coins neither here nor in other world. New Minster was confused. He couldn't think of any solution and spent endless night worrying about it. He felt hopeless, seeing this his wife advised him to go to Birbal. So, at last he went to Birbal for help. When minister went to Birbal for solution he said to him, Give me coins and I will handle the rest. Next day Birbal went out with those coins. On his way he noticed rich merchant celebrating his son's wedding. Birbal went to him. Birbal gave a hundred gold coins to him and bowed courteously, saying, Emperor Akbar sends you his good wishes and blessings for the wedding of your son. Please accept the gift he has sent. Merchant felt honored to receive gift from Emperor, so he honored Birbal and gave large number to expensive gift as return gifts for the Emperor. Next, Birbal went to place where poor lived. He bought cloths and food with hundred coins and distributed them in the name to emperor. With left hundred coins he organized a music and dance concert for everyone. Next day Birbal entered Akbar's court and announced that the king had asked his brother-in-law to do. Birbal told him about all the events. Akbar asked him to explain. Birbal replied, The money I gave to the merchant for the wedding of his son, you have got back while on this earth. The money I spent on buying food and clothing for the poor, you will get it in the other world. The money I spent on the musical concert, you will get neither here nor there. Akbar's new minister understood his mistake and resigned to give Birbal his place back. Moral, money you spend on friends is returned or reciprocated in some form. Money spent on charity gets converted into blessings from God, which will be your eternal property. Money spent on pleasures is just frittered away.